Hello and welcome to LFC Focus. So Liverpool have just secured a very scrappy 2-0 win at Selhurst Park. I think we can all agree that that was a really difficult game for Liverpool. It was nowhere near as fun and laid back as the 4-0 victory against West Ham was. But in a way, that's almost what you almost want at Selhurst Park. I feel like if we'd come away with, you know, a relaxed 5-0 win or something like that, as much as that would have been great and I probably would have taken that a kickoff, you almost feel shortchanged by it not being a really difficult difficult game, a really nervy game and a really scrappy game as well. And I think the really encouraging sign from Liverpool today was that they didn't just almost sort of get over that. They actually got involved in the physical side of the game. You know, it was pointed out on Sky towards the end of the match. Liverpool were really involved in the physical battles. They were looking to actually match Crystal Palace in terms of flying tackles and using their bodies to shield the ball and stuff like that. And I thought that was just really, really encouraging from Liverpool. It wasn't like they tried to sort of think, no, we're going to do things our own pure footballing way. We thought, actually, this is going to be a battle here. And if we want to win it, we're going to have to get stuck in. And that is something that Liverpool did really well. And it's probably one of the reasons why they ended up coming away with the three points. So, obviously, the big talking point from the first half is the penalty. I'll come on to how we played over the whole 45 minutes a bit later on in the video. But first things first, we have to talk about the foul by Sacco. I think it's one that you have to see many, many times before you really know whether it's a foul or not. And credit to the referee who, if I'm honest, did have a pretty poor performance tonight. He got a lot of decisions wrong in favour of both sides, really. Neither side really benefited fitted from him but I think that decision he probably got it right because when you look at it enough times you realize that Sacco as much as he doesn't make a huge contact with Salah nothing really that you'd expect would throw Salah to the ground he doesn't really impede him in that sense he's got his hands all over Mo Salah he's chucking his feet around and while like I said it's not enough to bring Salah down it's enough to put him off to the point where he can't actually get a clean shot away or anything like that and the moment that cemented in my mind that it was a penalty was the way that he just throws his leg out again when Salah's got away from him when there's no chance of him getting the ball he still sticks a leg out and he's never going to reach it but it just is reckless play and at the end of the day you are going to get punished from that and I think it's the kind of penalty we didn't get enough last season so again another encouraging sign there that hopefully referees are a bit more wise to how opposition defenders will treat Liverpool's attackers and how they'll try and use their physicality to put them off in a way that is probably illegal but you don't necessarily get penalties for and also good that Salah threw himself down because it does feel like he's getting a little bit smarter there he's realised that you know I think he there's a lot to be said for the fact that he was probably a little bit too honest last season there were too many times where in that kind of situation where it's not enough to bring you down but it does put you off and you can't take your shot properly he'd try and stay up and he'd still try and get the shot off whereas actually what he really should be doing is throwing himself to the floor because while sometimes you might get carded for a dive or something like that other times you'll get rewarded with a penalty so I think that was really smart from Salah and like I said we didn't get that enough last season and if referees are going to continue to ref games like that and give us those kind of penalties it's definitely a positive sign because it gives it stops opposition defenders from trying to use their physicality in an overly zealous way to try and stop us scoring and then it's a really good pen from James Milner as well who I think in general had a really really good half I think when you look at the way James Milner played, you can make the case of the fact that Liverpool probably played within themselves an awful lot in that first half. I think he's a good barometer to judge just how attacking we're being because he's the box-to-box -box midfielder. He's the one who does defending and attacking. And if there's a lot of him trying to create and driving into the box and making late runs and trying to get assists and even get goals and stuff like that, then that's a clear sign that we are on the attack and we're trying to stay on the front foot. Whereas when he does what he did today, which was dropping deep an awful lot, helping out the uh, the number six player who is Genie Van Alderman in this instance, who I also thought had a really, really good game. You know, dealt with everything that was thrown with it, uh, at him incredibly well, especially given that he's not necessarily the tallest player. And he had to deal with a huge physical threat from Crystal Palace. But what I really liked was the way that James Milner, he was always dropping in as a fullback and stuff like that, or even dropping in as in, into an almost centre-back position. And while, yes, that did kind of affect us further up the pitch, and there were moments where, you know, we didn't quite create enough of chances. And I was thinking maybe we actually need a Shakiri in the midfield or a Sturridge or someone like that, or even an Adam Alana, someone who's just got a little bit more about them in terms of creative quality. I think there's a lot to be said for the fact that while Milner's got those things in his locker, he was actually holding himself back and defending because Crystal Palace do always have that threat on the counter-attack and he's got to be aware of that. So I thought it was a really good game from James Milner all in all. He really summed up the defensive efforts and the focus of Liverpool in that first half as well. I think when you look at the half overall and certainly from an attacking perspective, I think 
We tried to go through the fullbacks a little bit too much, and I think their experience did show in that game a wee bit too much. You know, obviously, uh, Crystal Palace were a very compact team. They try and keep things tight, and Selhurst Park is not the biggest pitch in the Premier League, I think it's fair to say. So we were trying to get the ball out to the fullbacks to try and get them to sort of bomb on, make the pitch as big as possible. And I just think we were asking a little bit too much of them at times, and there were a few moments where, and you could say this for most players in the game in general, I think there just wasn't enough risk. I wouldn't say not enough ambition because that would suggest that they weren't trying to score goals, but I think there were a few moments where they didn't really try and force the issue to the point where they were willing to tr give the ball away in the hope that they'd be able to turn it over and create another attack straight afterwards. And again, I can see where that comes from. It's very understandable that we didn't play as many vertical passes. You know, we tried it at various points and when we did, we did look good and we created a few chances. You obviously got the Salah one where he tries to chip the goalkeeper but just gets way too much on it and that is really good play from Cater to set that up. He makes a fantastic turn under a lot of pressure from a Palace attacker and then just launches the ball forward. So that was great, but I can see why we weren't always doing that because with Palace's threat on the counter-attack, and that did show at various points in the game, I can see why we were making sure that we didn't allow that to get the better of us too often. And because of that, we didn't always commit too many men forward and we didn't always take too many risks. So... I think it was almost a really good and mature performance from Liverpool because, again, they didn't let their stylistic concerns get the better of them. They weren't obsessed with the idea that, you know, we're Liverpool, we're the big team, we have to attack, we have to have the ball, we have to press. They did say that, actually, we've got to respect Palace here and respect how they're trying to win the game because if we don't, then they're going to cause us problems. So I thought in that first half, as much as it was really, really tough, I think it was a really impressive performance for Liverpool and I think all 11 players on the pitch deserve credit, not just for that half, but for the whole game as well. And I think one thing that I really liked out of that half and it's something you could say for the whole game as well again was that the defense just wasn't a talking point when you consider how much is said about the conflicting styles between how we play and how Palace play and how you know Benteke is the sort of archetypal striker that has caused us problems in the past the kind of player who just gets up in the air is big is physical and wins knockdowns for a speedy tricky player like Zaha that has caused us problems in the past it's perfectly fair to say that that has been an issue for Liverpool but it just was a non-issue for most of the game today and I think a lot of credit does have to go to those centre-backs to the full-backs as well because they defended really well and to the goalkeeper and of course massive credit to Joe Gomez for his fantastic sliding tackle on Wilf Zaha when Zaha was through on goal that was absolutely immense and probably saved Liverpool uh, a goal and could have actually ended up helping us get towards those three points so yeah a really immense effort in the first half and that carried on in the second half I thought we saw out the game really well for most of it there were a few moments where things did get a little bit nervous but I thought all in all we managed the game fairly well you know we kept the ball in Palace's half for a lot of it we kept them away from the ball as well we just kept things ticking over nicely I think the, the substitution of Jordan Henderson was absolutely key to that I think he had a really good game you know he wasn't flashy and it's the kind of game that Henderson's detractors will always use and say well he passes sideways too much he's not creating goals occasionally he overhits his passes and gives away a goal kick or something like that but I think that is not what he was being asked to do today. He was asked to just see the game out and keep things ticking over in midfield. And he did that absolutely fantastically. I really like Jordan Henderson's performance today. And I think, you know, if he's not going to start every game this season, it's fantastic that we have a player like that on our bench that when we're in those kind of situations, and this is not the first or the last time that Liverpool have been in that kind of situation where they need a bit more game management away from home, that we can bring on a player like Jordan Henderson to just help us through it. So yeah, all in all, the, first, the second half, we dealt with Palace's threat really well. I think there were a few times where Zaha got in and got a little bit closer to the goal than we would have liked. He was a massive pest. And I think while Trent did deal with him reasonably well and Gomez did as well, there was one moment where there were shouts for a penalty, but it's actually a phenomenal tackle from Joe Gomez. He just wins the ball so cleanly in the box and clatters with Zaha in the process. There's no way it's a penalty and it's a really good foul because again, it could have actually stopped Palace from scoring a goal. So that was really, really good from our defence there. There were a few moments as well where he did fizz the ball across goal so on another day maybe Palace get the goal but in these kind of games you do almost need just a little bit of luck you know you need the Herculean efforts from the players you need everyone to put in an immense effort on the pitch but you do also need a little bit of fortune on your side as well and we did get that with the fact that when the ball was fizzed across goal then Palace couldn't really get a toe on it and I think Allison, you know we saw the measure of him a bit more today than we did against West Ham you know we we're all kind of thinking this is the game where we might see him make a few big saves we'll certainly see him get 
put under more pressure as well. He dealt with everything that he was thrown with him perfectly. You know, it was a faultless performance. Essentially, every time the, the shots were on him, he dealt with them. I think the Townsend one that comes off the bar, if that is under the bar, he probably saves it. And my favourite one was actually as a half shot, which was essentially straight at him, but it squirmed as it went towards him. And it's the kind that you could have just expected a lesser goalkeeper, the kind of goalkeepers, the nervy goalkeepers that we've had in the past would have spilt it, would have created another chance for Palace or even let it through their legs or something like that. And he just gathered it so calmly that it's such a breath of fresh air as Liverpool fans that we've got a goalkeeper who can do that. And again, everything else he did, catching crosses, making punches, being bigger dominant in the air was absolutely fantastic. I think it's really, really good that we've got a goalkeeper like Alisson on our side. And he will, he is another player who will really help us in games like this. And then of course you got the red card as the game is closing out, as Liverpool are trying to clinch that crucial second on the break. I mean... It's probably not a red card. There's not enough. There's contact. So, you know, fair enough. You could maybe give a foul. It's pretty harsh to give a red card. But at the end of the day, it's another instance of Salah just getting smarter. You know, yeah, you can probably say it's a dive. But if he's going to get the decision, you can't really go against him because it's just smart play from him. And again, it's the kind of thing he wasn't doing enough last season. And it's a really encouraging sign that he is now getting the better of referees, essentially, and getting in their head and saying, look at all these players hacking me down. Are you not going to do anything about this? And he got in the referee's head today. And that is probably another one of the things that helped Liverpool get to the win. I mean, I've said that so many times because it was such a marginal game. And that's almost the crux of the matter is that this is, these are the kind of games that you don't always win if you're not going to win the title. And if you want to win the title, you've got to be getting three points in situations like these. So look, I'm not saying that Liverpool are cruising to the title now. City, as we already know from the two games they've played so far in the season, are an incredibly huge threat. They are fantastic and Liverpool could show title winning form and still not win it. But this does look like a Liverpool side, which is capable of reaching the 90 points barrier. And from there, you know, anything else is possible. And then, of course, of course, finally, you got the Mane goal at the end. It's it's very late on in the game. You know, it's not inconsequential, but it's just essentially a nice bit of icing on the cake and does calm us down and stop Palace from having a couple more nervy corners or anything like that at the end of the game. It was really good work from Sadio, you know, kept himself up, allowed the referee to play advantage, goes around the goalkeeper really well, showed great composure in general and just slotted the ball away. And that was really, really impressive given how late it was in the game and given how much work Sadio Mane had done, I think... It almost got overlooked in that game how much defensive work he was doing, how much he got back to try and help out Andrew Robertson. And that was really what impressed me in this game was how we didn't just, you know, we, Liverpool are a team that do attack with 10 or even 11 men, essentially. But you could probably accuse us of having a few players who do stay up the pitch in search of hopefully getting another goal on the counter-attack or something like that. But today, it really did feel like when we needed to, we defended with 11 men as well. And I really liked what Sadio Mane was doing when he would track back and when he would help out defensively. And that makes it all the more impressive that he had the legs in him and the composure and the mental focus to score that goal again and wrap up what was a fantastic three points for Liverpool. So that is all for today's video. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, then why not give it a like? If you're new around here as well, hit that subscribe button there. Check out some of the other videos that have been out on the channel over the past few days as well. Don't forget to follow at LFC Focus TV on Twitter and I'll be back soon with the build-up content for the game against Brighton on Saturday evening. Bye for now.